this computer. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, may I have your attention, please? Because coming to you from all over the place, perhaps multiple times, <laughs> this is Far Out Fiesta episode 189, DIY on FOF. I am your host and humble narrator, Richard Houghton. Please Woo! give it up for our amazing cast, Juliana Briscoe, Woo! Rob Hudspeth, Yeah. <laughs> Question for you: What is the tallest mountain and/or range of mountains you have ever climbed or been to? The tallest mountain or range of mountains you've ever climbed, hiked, visited? How about that, Kristen? <laughs> I don't even remember. I used to go to music encampments in Killington, Vermont, which is a big ski. Oh, wow! And we'd climb. Some of those. That counts. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> what about you, Rob? I would have to say uh, Banff. Oh, wow. Louise area up in Canada, the Canadian Rockies. Very nice. Wait. Jules? No, just Banff. <laughs> um, I don't know what would be the tallest. I grew up in California. We would Not go to Big Bear a lot. Place. Yeah. Mm. But then in Virginia, we've gone to mountains up there. And I've been to the Grand Canyon. And technically, if you're at the top of the Grand Canyon, nah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, I think it, I, although I have been to the mountains in California, I think it's probably Colorado, but I couldn't tell you specifically mm -hmm. what mountain and or mountain range. All right, far out, let's fiesta. Good evening and welcome to DIY on FOF. Good evening and welcome to DIY on FOF. Good evening and welcome to DIY on FOF. Good evening, welcome to DIY on FOF. FOF. Why do we have to all say that? Sponsor fetish. <clears throat> we love, love our sponsors <laughs> and their fetishes. <laughs> on tonight's DIY on FOF, we will learn some fantastic DIY tips from local self-proclaimed experts in their fields. Self-proclaimed. Yeah, I'm an expert in bathroom repairs. I'm an expert in art. I am an expert in arts too. I'm an expert in stupid bathroom repairs too. I mean, I, I wanted I wanted art because I've always thought of myself as a creative. Sorry, I, I'm an expert in, in bathroom repairs. That was them self-proclaiming their expertise. Hmm. Uh -huh. I'm an expert in using spiders as weapons. You don't get to proclaim your expertise, Richard. I'm sorry. Hey, okay, on tonight's uh, DIY, we'll run the full spectrum of do-it-yourself projects from bathroom enhancements to art. Tonight's DIY on FOF will feature four segments with our experts. By the end of tonight's podcast, you will know two ways to improve your bathroom and two art projects you can do as you wait for tomorrow's cruel apocalypse. Lighten up, man. DIY on FOF will be joined by Ted from Bathroom Shack after this live spot. Tonight's DIY on FOF is brought to you by the good people at Babysitters with Scary Masks. Yeah, babysitters with Scary Masks is the number one way. Families and reliable, trustworthy baby babysitters who will show up at your home with extremely realistic and horrifyingly, horrifyingly triggering masks. Guaranteed to trigger nightmares and lasting psychological damage. When finding a babysitter with a scary mask, nothing is more important to the process than trust and safety. And the mask, of course, has to be really scary. I mean, something the child has never seen before. Both babysitters, and, both babysitters with scary masks and parents can verify their ID by confirming their email address and phone number, whether any child has been permanently psychologically scarred by a previous mask, and you, you can check your, the member's profile to see what information has been verified. Get to know babysitters with scary masks and other parents cool with uh, freaking the crap out of their kids through their profiles, references, and reviews. Through references and reviews, you can see what other community members have said about a particular babysitter's scary mask. You should always ask to speak with their references uh, before you uh, first, um, babysitting with uh, scary mass appointment. 
these masks, they better be freaking scary because my, my four-year-old is a little too full of herself. Babysitters with scary masks. The next DIY on FOF segment is brought to you by the good people at Babysitters with Scary Masks. Welcome, Ted, from Bathroom Shack with Ted. It's Theodore. Ted. It's, it's Ted. Ted. And Ted is here to show us how to install a bidet. I like to think of a bidet as it's kind of like a, it's a downstairs water pick. Yeah. <laughs> um. Sure. Okay. Well, with the help of everyone in the FOF cast, except for Rob, who needs him, I'm going to show you exactly what you'll need to be able to squirt water on your family's privates. Now, for our regular FOF viewers who don't know what a bidet is, can you please share a description of a bidet with the two of our viewers who haven't already moved on to something else? Well, a bidet is a bowl or receptacle designed to be sat on for the purpose of washing the human genitalia, perineum, inner buttocks, and anus. Juliana hit the nail on the head. Bing, bing, bing. Or the woo-woo with the water squirt, as the case may be. How do we help, Ted? Well, uh, before starting any project, carefully read the installation instructions packaged within. In this case, the bidet and identify the parts. Oh, why not? <laughs> Although I, I, I must warn you, uh, Kristen, mm -hmm. one, one sip of alcohol has a tendency to make my behavior erratic. Ah, I added a floater and made it a double. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Yes, I think it's a great idea. Mm. Oh, so delicious. Oh, goodness. Well, to install a bidet, you need the following. Adjustable wrench. Get me! Ah, what the hell? Ouch! <laughs> it's happening, mother. <laughs> they laughed at me, but I'll show them. <laughs> oh, sorry. To install a bidet, you will need the bidet and its mounting nuts and bolts. Uh, carpenter's level, hot and cold risers, uh, tubes. Uh, oh, here, catch screwdriver. Juliana Duck. Uh, uh, thanks. Hey, stop throwing tools at us, man. Screwdriver stuck in my knee. Oh, well, maybe you can seal that up with a little silicone sealant, which you will also need for the project. Here, let me let me just inject it into your wound here. Um, is that safe? Well, you know, extremely dangerous is the new safe. Uh, so it's safe. So what's next, Ted? Oh, glad you asked. Well, probably some kind of tourniquet to keep the silicone from entering Richard's bloodstream. Uh, I mean, I'm a, I'm a DIY bathroom expert, not a doctor. I mean, I, I only did undergrad work in bloodstream toxicology. So what's the next step in installing a uh, bidet, Ted? What was that about the silicone entering my bloodstream, Ted? Well, follow these steps to install a bidet. So attach the faucet and drain fittings to the body of the bidet. Uh, Juliana, will, will, you, will you please do that? Or screw you, make Richard do it. Okay, Richard, uh, did your leg fall off from the silicone? Uh, about to, why? Well, attach the faucet and drain fittings to the body of the bidet. What? Okay, like, like this? Yeah, perfect. And the leg fell off. I wonder what that means for my existing pants. Maybe you can staple that leg back on. Well, I have some Elmer's. Oh, good thought. BRB. And uh, what's the next step in installing a bidet, Ted? Well, move the bidet to its location and check the alignment with the drain and water supply pipes. Me? Hmm? Screw you. There's no way I'm doing that. Richard! Hey! Hey! I stapled my leg back on! Ready for manual labor! Uh, he needs you to move the bidet in, to its location and check the alignment with the trains and water supply pipes. I do that. Oh! <laughs> what a wicked dizzy, by the way! From the silicon racing through my veins! Nice. Ted, is, Ted, is there something I can help with while Richard does all that? 
Oh, well, well, Christian, here's what I'm going to need you to, to do is I need you to draw a contour of the bidet on the floor and mark the location of the hold down bolts on the floor. Okay, here's the thing. Screw you. No. Uh, okay, well, let's just let Richard do it. Uh, I'm down. Hmm? Yeah, me too. I'm great with that. Okay, you know, before I lose my crap all over the place and pull out a small handgun and start shooting motherfuckers who look at me the wrong way, I'll finish the instructions as fast as I can. Wait, I, wait, I, I did not wear anything appropriate for handgun shooting today. Tough. Me either. I'm wearing this t-shirt I got from Target. It's nice. Anyway, remove the bidet and drill pilot holes for the hold down bolts. So you'll use the contour that the Christian was fine enough to draw on the floor and reposition the bidet. You insert the hold down bolts and, 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 and tighten them. Uh, Richard, are you getting all of this? There are consequences if you screw up. Consequences? Consequences, Richard. <laughs> so far, I'm good. I'm using the contour drawn on the floor. It was okay, I'm maybe going into shock. I mean, my leg fell off and it's it's stapled back on. Okay, wh what else does he need to do, Ted? Well, Kristen, he needs to use a carpenter's level to assure that the bidet is level. Because, I mean, if you're squatting on that thing, you don't want it, like, angling out the wrong way. So you, you, you place the caps over the heads of the bolts and apply the silicone sealant. Uh, silicone sealant! Bad! Okay, well, you apply the silicone sealant around the base of the bidet, you connect the hot and cold fissure tubes, you shut off valve and your drain, you connect the water supply and drain and turn on the water to check for leaks. Hmm, seems easy enough. Are you done yet, Richard? I, be like I, seconds. I, I, I can see my body and I, I'm, I'm floating above it. Uh, you might want to see what that ethereal light is about. It's kind of creepy. But is the bidet done? Yeah. Well, rock on. Thanks, Ted. <laughs> Well, 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 thank you. So, uh, so, so, so can Mima have her antidote now? Oh, we lied about that. Yeah, screw you. You know, I can make this bidet shoot oil and hot water. Is that a threat or an upgrade? Huh. Anyway, let's talk after the show. Uh, you know, that's why we installed it in my efficiency apartment in the first place. <laughs> my leg is miraculously healed. Woo. Oh. Cool staple star scarf. Thanks. You want to touch them? Uh, no, I'm not that cool. Mm -hmm. uh -uh. All right, so I'm back on. In our next segment, we will make some art with ambrosia from our check. But first, a PSA, which counts as community service for all of us. Yeah. Oh, court ordered? Mm -hmm. Yep. Does that mean we're outlaws? Just do the damn PSA. Recognizing Scary Mask Induced Trauma, or SMIT, in children. Recognizing SMIT in children. Recognizing SMIT in children. Recognizing SMIT. Any scary mask-related incident that threatens physical harm can cause SMIT. SMIT events may include your parents hire a babysitter wearing a really scary mask. SMIT events may include putting you under the care of your worst nightmare. SMIT events occur at a critical time when you are defining trust, relationships with adults, and learning to identify strangers that could be with you for the rest of your life and are dangerous. SMIT events like the, masked ba the mask the babysitter is wearing, it's really scary to you as a child. Like you saw what you as a child is this really scary being getting you a Mr. Pib and letting you play Xbox till 10 so she can have her boyfriend over to make out in scary masks. The scary mask induced trauma in children problem is real, people. And Smith is no laughing matter. Merely. Uh, okay, well maybe the next segment will be funnier. I really doubt it. A girl can hope. Mm. Did that sponsor cancel out the other one? Um, tonight, DIY on FOF is joined by Ambrosia from Art Shack. She's going to show us how to make some delightful wall hangings. Oh, Juliana would love this segment. She would. Where did she go? Um, so what are you going to show us, Ambrosia? We're going to create some custom cactus artwork for 
decor that's pretty not prickly. <laughs> Hilarious! This DIY project is easy to make. That's a hint of Western, uh, East Western style to any uh, space. Oh, it sounds perfect. I love East Western style. It's like eating a hamburger with chopsticks. Yeah. Well, plus, you don't need a green thumb to keep it looking fresh. So. Well, my thumb is normal normal thumb color, though my leg is a little green uh, from where it fell off. Move on along with these instructions to make your own cactus artwork. Oh, we will. We will, Ambrosia. Uh, so what will we need to make cactus artwork? White mixed media paper, acrylic printing blocks, uh, adhesive from foam sheets. All right, got it. What else? Craft paints, three shades of green, and two or three flower colors, scissors, and a craft knife. Okay, I've got it. What else? A cutting mat, foam brushes. Foam brushes, got it. Pencil and a 50 gallon drum of placenta. Uh, what was that last item? 50 gallon drum of placenta. Oh, got it. We do? <laughs> Why? Well, you never know. Uh, we're really going to make artwork out of industrial placenta. Uh-huh. So what's the first step? Step one, make templates. We've got to drink a quarter placenta, draw a cactus shape with concealed uh, industrial placenta on paper and cut out the uh, templates. Uh, okay, I'm drinking a quart of placenta. You know, the flavor is completely running up my nose. So what's next? All right, step two. Make stencil trace uh, templates onto the back of the placenta vat top crust. Okay, so scooping placenta top crust, laying it out on parchment paper. What's next? Step three, stamp cacti, cut paper to desired size. Prepare placenta gravy onto two separate paper plates. Okay, preparing placenta gravy. Add placenta and use placenta to make the largest cactus placenta stamp to make your cactus a placenta color. Well, thanks, Am Ambrosia. Uh, you know, the smell of that much placenta is more than my olfactory senses can process. My nose is inverted. Okay, I think I, I think some of it splashed in my mouth. That's all right. It'll make your hair shiny or something. Oh, for reals? Oh, yeah. Richard, did you finish that whole cord? Uh, this has been Art Shack with Ambrosia. Ah, crap! I just smelled a 50-gallon drum of placenta! <laughs> I'm not cleaning that up. Richard, after the commercial, we will be joined by yet another bathroom repair expert. Why'd you say it like that? Placenta boy. You know, you can still call me Richard, and yeah, I'm cleaning up the 50 gallons of spilled placenta. Aw, thanks, placenta boy. Yeah. You are not alone when it comes to placenta-related disease. I'm not? Mm, no. A percentage of all diseases in the country where you live. Oh, that's close to me. I should be concerned. A percentage of all diseases in the country where you live is placenta-related disease. Even speech so, impediments. So that would be zero percent? Dude, seriously? Uh, sorry. Uh, gosh! I have a placenta-related disease. Where can I turn? Health and legal resources for people diagnosed with placenta-related disease and psychicreadings.com. Please set the stage and tell us more. Gladly. After facing the harsh reality of placenta-related illness diagnosis, you may have many unanswered questions. Why am I always around 50-gallon drums of placenta? And you may feel powerless. I am powerless. But you're not. M2? No, are not. Infinity. Oh. Get the placenta survival. Uh, get the placenta. Sur injured. This cue card is messed up. <laughs> okay, uh, there we go. Get the placenta injury survival kit and to tell you what you need to know at absolutely no cost or obligation to you. What does the kit provide? 
This free kit provides resources specifically developed with the placenta-related injury, patient and placenta-related injury caregiver in mind. You will get the information necessary to better understand placenta boo-boos and the journey ahead. Health and legal resources for people diagnosed with a related illness. Psychic readings. Psychic readings. Okay. Okay. Um, our sponsors are sketchy at best. I mean, they're, they're the kind of sponsors who will wake up in a pool of their own blood with teeth missing and just one shoe. The DIY Bathroom Shack with Fanny segment is sponsored by the good people at Placenta Vats or us. <laughs> oh, well, all right. Well, uh, Take it away, Fanny. Thanks, Rob. I'm Fanny, and I'll be showing you everything you need to know to install a urinal in your own home. Uh, as a woman, why would I need a urinal in my own home? What else are you going to do with that gross of urinal cakes? Urinal soaked coasters. Duh. So uh, tell us about uh, home urinal instruments installation Penny. Uh, what do we need to know about um, how do we, what what do we need to know to install a home urinal well urinal installation is not something that most women do in their homes or businesses so you might be considering whether to call in a plumber for help with this project plumbers are the devil However, if you are feeling adventurous and as a woman are seen to experience the peeing standing up experience, then you will be able to get you will be able to get the best of your urinal installation by following a few simple instructions. Right, they had better be simple. I am pretty slow. Step yes. one: <laughs> fitting the mounting board. For the first step in adding a urinal to your bathroom is to add a mounting board to the wall. Um, what, like this? Gold star, Rob! <laughs> Thank you! Walls come in a number of different varieties, but most personal urinals reach the floor as standalone items. I'd like this personal urinal to reach the floor, because I think that it, when I pee, it's going to splatter less. Yeah. Mm. Attach the mounting board to the wall, making sure that you install it so that all of the urinal fittings can be screwed into, into this board. Okay, and done. Now what? Step two, add the cold water line. Once the mounting board has been fitted, and you are then ready to start connecting the water pipes. I am a big fan of water pipes. First, take the cold water pipe and bring it to the front of the mounting board. Make sure that you have the pipes in the correct position to attach to the front of the faucet. Like this? No, God, that's terrible. Instead of a gold star, you get a kick in the shin. Ouch! You broke the skin! Oh, 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 oh. like this? Perfect, Rob! Double gold star! Mm, uh, all right, stop flirting. What's next, Manny? Okay, uh, you should add a shutoff valve be before the pipe is moved into place, as this will allow you to turn it off whenever you wish. Uh, instead of installing the shutoff valve, I was planning to stop the water flow with my mouth. I mean, you do know that this water's going to go into the toilet, right? Better than water coming from the toilet. True. Elbow pipe, so that the final piece of the cold water supply line is facing forward, ready to be attached to the urinal. And what's next? Step three! Um, <laughs> installing the drain! When you have added the supply line, you can then fit the drain into the into the urinal. Place a strainer into the hole at the bottom of the drain and add a layer of caulk to the metal. Oh, um, so Fanny, is that strainer to keep the chunks of curd in my urine from clogging the drain? Oh God, you probably should get that checked out, Rob. <sighs> Press the strainer down into the hole and ensure that it is that it's sealed tightly. The drain strainer should now be secured to the urinal. Oh, well, that's good because I really have to piss. Oh, me too. Uh, th what's next? Step four, installing the waste outlet. Okay, you will now need to attach the waste outlet to the drains. Attachment of, attachment of a T-pipe will allow you to join in two drain lines, one from your toilet 
and the other from the, your urinal. Um, the wall should be refinished once you've done this. So, um, all finished. Should uh, the three of us try it out? I'm down. Uh, I'm, I'm not cool with this, but thank you so much, um, Fanny from Bathroom Shack uh, with Fanny. Yeah, anytime, really. Anytime. <laughs> I generally live on like eight minutes of sleep a night. Next, our final DIY art segment of the night. Art Shack with Vincent. Welcome, welcome Vincent from Art Shack with Vincent. Vincent, Vincent, what are you doing? Uh, cutting off my ear. I am an artist. It's what artists do. Um, Vincent, won't you also be teaching us about sculpting? Like sculpting me a new ear? No, 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 not specifically, no. How about you tell us what, what we're going to learn about, Vincent? How about you mind your own... Sorry, artists are erratic, and it's generally a result of their syphilis. Hmm. Uh, you didn't mention anything about syphilis last night. Oh, well, uh, what will we be sculpting with today, Vincent? I certainly hope it's not syphilis. <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, it's dung. Human dung. I guess that's a little better. So tell us all about sculpting with human dung, Vincent. All right. Step one. Use clay to sculpt a basic image. In this case, I have sculpted... Is that a duodenum? A well, it, it's not just the first part of the small intestine. It is the entire digestive tract. Hmm. Well, that's appropriate. Oh, uh, what's next? Well, once the clay is complete, and depending on the sculpture size, sometimes hands and other forms are not attached, like hair and any flowing garments and other accessories will be cut off for mold making. Your clay digestive tract sculpture it doesn't have a body, but it does have flowing hair. Step two, a mold is then prepared using layers of silicone rubber and human dung and fiberglass cloth next to plaster or human dung. A fiberglass backing is to provide support and structure to the mold. The original clay is then removed from the mold. Okay, uh, done. What's next? Uh, step three, molten wax is then poured into the rubber mold. And, and directly onto my feet. What the hell, man? A feet are covered in molten wax. Molten wax is then poured into the rubber mold, producing a casting, the original 3D. It's called a wax pattern. Hmm. I like your bowels wax pattern, Vincent. Step four. Once cooled, the wax casting is removed from the mold and head finished using dental tools and heat tools. Where am I supposed to get dental tools? I don't know. Journeys? Journeys? But the unique teen retail leader with an emphasis on footwear and specialty items, including apparel, backpacks, hats, and accessories, also as dental tools? Step five, an elaborate system of human dung, wax rods called gates or sprues are applied to the wax pattern or 3D wax. Okay, I'm not trying to be a jerk about this, but my feet are still covered with molten wax. Step six, the casting process begins with the wax image being dipped into a mixture of silica sand, human dung, and slurry. I love anything with slurry. The next step takes several weeks to harden into a rock-like substance able to withstand the temperature of port bronze, which ranges from 1800 to 2100 degrees Fahrenheit. What's next? Step seven. The ceramic mold is put into a kiln, which bakes the ceramic and burns out the wax, some of the human dung, leaving a hollow cavity in its place. The bronze ingots are heated to liquid. Oh, those, those ingots look really hot. Ooh, I got five bucks that says Rob can't touch them with his tongue. You're on. <laughs> the ceramic mold is then filled with molten bronze. Some for the mold, some for Rob's feet. <laughs> Step eight. After the bronze shell, 
That's cool. The ceramic mold is carefully hammered and chiseled away, revealing the bronze and partial human dung sculpture within. Would someone please chisel the molten bronze away from my feet? And we get Richard to do it, but he's not here. So. Step nine. Yeah. Fine sand particles are blasted under air pressure to remove the last traces of human dung ceramic shell that adhere to the bronze. This is complicated. I'm losing interest. Step ten. The raw coating is then turned over to another artisan who cuts away the skates and sprues. The bronze parts are welded together like a large puzzle using pneumatic tools. Well, maybe those pneumatic tools can be used to remove the bronze that is now encasing my feet because it really hurts. Step 11, the bronze is now treated with acid. I would love to be treated with acid. To give its chosen color according to the artist's specifications. And that's all there is to it. Now you have a lovely, detailed sculpture of the human digestive tract. That's amazing, Vincent. It's realistic enough that I'm smelling farts. Oh, that's actually me. I, I fart a lot when in severe foot pain. Uh, you are quite the piece of work, Rob. Thank you for joining us tonight on DIY on FOF. We hope you have learned some things that will make you better people. Yeah, because frankly, we don't find you worthy of our content. No. Oh, wait, did that just, did that sound bitchy? My feet hurt. And this has been Fire Up this episode one eighty nine DIY or FOF. I am your host and humble narrator, Richard Hope. He is. Please, please give it up for our amazing cast, Kristen Keith. Yeah. Frisco. Yeah. And Rob Hudspeth. Uh, before we go, has anybody got any parting words or anything they would like to plug or discuss? Uh, the hey. box series are they're starting. Don't to get the out. COVID. I don't have it. <laughs> don't get it. I don't want it. Don't get it, Richard. All right, I won't. I just don't baked it. the COVID out. But are you my mom? Jeez. Yeah, really. Don't tell me. Yeah. I know my rights. <laughs> I want to jump off a cliff. I'm going to do it, damn it. That's yeah. Crazy. My right to get to COVID. <laughs> when, when did this become Russia? It's my yeah. body. It's my choice, sir. Yeah. Oh, man, you can't tell me what to do. I was never aborted. I could get the COVID. <laughs> didn't realize that was a qualifier. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just be safe here. Right. Anything else? All right. Thanks, everybody. Good night.